Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today we're going to parse some nested JSON stock data and convert it into a data frame. This was a question from a viewer who needed a little help and here's the question that they put on Stack Overflow. I was too lazy to create an account to do this problem. Let's get started. Feel free to hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. If you'd like to help support the channel, here's my Patreon or consider buying me a coffee. You only need these two imports for now. We'll have one more later on. I don't know where these data actually came from, if they're parsed from an API or what, but we have some form of a timestamp. We have this O, which I don't know what it means. We have a high, a low, a close, and then the volume. And then we have the ticker name. We need to convert these into a data frame. I'm going to show three examples. Before we move on, I want to mention something. The ticker, all of the values are held within this list. And then within that list, you have two separate dictionaries. Inside of that dictionary, you have all these key value pairs. That's the next thing that we have to deal with, which is can be quite confusing. The objective here is to perform our three ways. Let's get into the first one real quick. Let's create a list to store our variables and iterate inside of our stocks variable that I'm converting into items, which will be tuples for ease of parsing. Let's look at what this gives us. The keys are zero, one will be all of our values, which are the list of our nested objects. Therefore, let's go inside of this and save everything. And then we should convert this into a data frame now. This is kind of what we're looking for. Let's just make up a variable name. All right, we still have to address this problem here. So we have a list. There's a function we could use, which is pandas explode. It flattens that. But then we're going to have the nested objects inside of that we have to deal with. Let's do this in a couple steps, all right? I'm just going to make up some variable name because I'm too lazy to think of what this should be called. Let's use the flattening of the list. And that's what we produce here. Now we have to deal with the JSON object. How are we going to deal with that? Let's figure that out. We got to use something called JSON normalize, but we have a few steps to do this. We first convert this into JSON and then we orient it into records. From there, we got to take that and we're going to use a JSON.loadS, which represents strings. And then we're going to do the pandas json normalize which spreads everything out for us this is one way which logically is how i would set these data up but this isn't what the client wanted that'll be in the last example from there we would rename these columns here so let's do that real fast and just cut and paste that just for simplicity we'll take our old column put the new name old column put the new name chuck it in because this is, what is this called? I'll just call it DF1. I'll call this DF1. And there we go. I didn't know what this was called. So I just left it be. There's the change of our names. Let's move on to something else. Wait, we could have done this more simply. We had too many redundant steps. How should we have taken care of this instead, which would have simplified the process? Therefore, we could have taken in the original data like this, then, we could have created this data frame, but this name the columns real fast. Just do just like we did before. Run the pandas explode. Now this particular thing only works on one column at a time. If you're using multiple columns, consider doing an apply function. I've showed that in a lot of videos, but we don't need that in this case. Now we're almost there. What else do we need to do? We need to convert the JSON formatting that we did before. So that's instead, this is getting kind of long. Name this as DF1 better. Then let's call the DF1 better. And then scroll up. We we'll just copy all this, come back down. And then we paste it right here. Then we got the same thing. Then all you need to do is just rename these. Let's get into the second example real quick. Let's just take the stocks. And here we got the columns now, which is the ticker symbol or the stock name. Let's just call this a DF2 real quick. And let's run our JSON normalize. So what I did was the same thing we did before for all of the JSON.normalize to this point. But you'll notice this looks kind of goofy. It's two rows and everything's split out wide. And this could explode on you really fast. We only have, I think, what, three or three or four entries for stocks. 
And so this isn't really something you want to do. This causes a lot of problems and not something you want to do for this particular data set. So we need to move on to another example of what we're trying to achieve. This one is more challenging and we should think about what's really going on. There's quite a few steps for this. So let me run through this. We need to call in collections because we're going to import default dictionary. We're going to also create a separate list to store our variables and then we're going to iterate inside of our stock data, which are going to be converted into our tuples, the keys and our values. Then we are going to iterate once more because we want to go inside of each one of these lists. What does this give us? All right, so now we're inside of each of the lists, so we need to go a little further since we're dealing with dictionaries again. Now, what are we going to do? Let's look at the formatting of what the client actually wanted. So give me a second. This is what the client wants for the formatting here. The closing price is what they want, is what I'm seeing. So let's get into that. And we need to take these. I want to show you something before we move on. The timing here and here is with respect to one ticker symbol or stock. It's the same exact value for each of these because they're taking at the same time for however they were pulling this data from some API. Since we're going inside of this once more, let's see what it looks like. Okay, we have our tuples, but now we have to do comparisons to get the timing correct for each one of these. And then open close is what I did, but really I just need the closing values. We need to start going inside of all of this and using the conditional statements to go one by one to take our information. First, we're going to take the time and make sure that it's not inside of the list that we're creating. Put it inside of this list. Oh, I made a mistake. We didn't set up our default dictionary, which is what should be here. Therefore, we're not going to get the repeats of this. Then we're going to chuck in our key and append the values. And then we got to do an LF statement, which is taking in the closing price, which I originally did the open and close price for each day. And let's chuck that in. I don't even need this. So let's take our key and append our values. Well, okay, sounds good. So we have the closing price for each day for each one of our stocks. And then we have the time. Let's throw this into our data frame. Okay, cool. So we got the formatting that they wanted for stack overflow. Let's call this DF3 real quick and chuck this in. We need to rename the column for the time or the T. We're just going to call it date, I guess. So we'll do that. Now we need to do some timestamp information to convert everything. So let's look at this piece by piece real quick. Since we're dealing with that timestamp, which is just those jumble looking values. What? Day. There we are. We move on to this and converted each entry into date formatting so we could actually interpret this as humans. So we iterate through this. I just converted into values, do a range length. So we go row wise, throw that in here with the column and just convert it from timestamp into the date time different before. There we are. Then we chuck in the column of date. We print everything off and we're done. And now to solve the problem for that stack overflow question and the viewer who needed a little bit of help. As always, feel free to hit me up here on Instagram and Twitter. If you'd like to help support the channel, here's my Patreon or consider to buy me a coffee. But I hope this brought utility to someone. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or suggestions. I hope this brought utility to someone. See you in the next video. Bye.